Good afternoon. My name is Nico Boon. I'm a professor at the Center for Microbial Ecology and Technology. And during the next 15 minutes, I will explain you our drinking water research. I don't have to tell you that we are in the middle of the corona crisis, and this will be probably followed by a session. But for the future, we will have also a third very major challenge, climate change. Here in Europe and around the world, we are already feeling the effects of climate change. And especially here in Flanders, we are seeing that we have less and less water available. Less water available, while the demand for water is only increasing. In the past, we have been fighting for natural resources around the world. Like we have been fighting for oil, for minerals. Let's just hope that in the future we don't have to fight for water as a resource. But what can we do about it here in Europe and Flanders? Well, we can start changing the world by drinking tap water instead of bottled water. And why shouldn't we do it? Tap water is the safest food product we have. It's controlled on 80 different parameters. It's very cheap and it's delivered at home. What could you wish more? Additionally, drinking tap water is also good for the environment. Some colleagues from our faculty, from the group of Rio de Wolf, just recently published a paper showing that if all people in Flanders would switch from bottled water to tap water, we could save greenhouse emissions equivalent to a car which drives 140 times around the world. And this in only one day. So indeed, we can make a change. Why are we not doing it? As you can see from these headlines, once in a while we have problems with drinking water. We have problems with taste and smell. And these taste and smell problems can come from microbial processes. That's why it's so important to control the microbial communities in our network and in our production facilities. I come back to my opening slide. So we know that bacteria are very important for water quality. And if you want to manage these microbes, you of course have to monitor them. So which possibilities do we have to monitor bacteria in drinking water? To understand how we are assessing the microbial quality of drinking water nowadays, we have to go back 140 years ago. In those days, uh, we had a lot of problems with cholera, uh, contaminating our surface water. And the surface water, to be able to drink it, we had to treat it. So like that, we made drinking water through sound filtration. Of course, it was very essential to see if this drinking water was safe to drink or not. And to check this, uh, Robert Koch did some pioneering work. He took some samples from the drinking water, plated them out on growing, re growing media, and like that he could quantify the amount of bacteria present in the drinking water. If there were less than 100 bacteria per milliliter of water, the water was safe for consumption. If there were more than 1000 bacteria per ml present, well then you should for sure not drink this drinking water. After 140 years, we are still using the same microbial techniques to assess the microbial quality of our drinking water. So we put a sample of water on such an agar medium. We incubate at a proper temperature, 28 degrees, 37 degrees. We wait between one and 10 days. And then in theory, every bacterium which was present in our drinking water should start growing and we will get a colony. So the amount of colonies is representative for the amount of bacteria which are present. The main issue with this technique is that 30 years ago we discovered that just a very minority of all bacteria can grow on these iron plates. So about 99.99% of all bacteria in drinking water cannot be cultured on these media. Let's go back to the world of Robert Koch 140 years ago. In those days, you already had some cars. They could phone with each other. They had maps to travel around. They had books if they went to the library to read. And if they wanted to listen to music, they could go to a concert hall. After 140 years, well, we can still drive around. Of course, with cars which are a bit more sophisticated. And if you want to phone uh, to each other, if you want to have a map or read a book or listen to music, we can have this all now from one device, a mobile device. This is how Robert Koch was analyzing the drinking water quality in 1880. This is how we are nowadays analyzing the water quality in 2021. So you can see not too much has changed in these 140 years. 
So you were wondering at our center, is it not time for an update? That's why we started exploring 15 years ago different technologies to look at bacteria in drinking water. The one which is the most promising one I'm going to present to you now. That is microbial flow cytometry. How does microbial flow cytometry work? It's a very simple technique. You take your bacteria, you add a fluorescent stain, then you hit every cell individually with a laser. Uh, because of the combination of the laser, the stain and the bacteria, you will have some excitation and light emission. And this light will be recorded by detectors, determining the single cell properties of every bacterium. The advantage of this technique that is that it's very fast. You have your result within 20 minutes and even you can go online. So this means you almost don't have any lag time. It's very cheap on the consumable side. It's reliable and it's quantitative. So you have numbers of cells per a certain volume you get out of it. That was the state of the art 10 years ago. What we extra added to this technique is the community fingerprinting. Our proof of principle we performed on bottled water. In this bottled water, we knew already from previous research using molecular techniques that the microbial composition was totally different uh, from brand to brand. So we also analyzed these uh, bottled waters on flow cytometry. What you can see here is an example of a scatter plot. So you see on the two axes the two detectors for the fluorescence. Every small dot you can see is one individual cell. And like this, you see that these cells are making up a cloud. And you can also see that between the different brands that the shape of the cloud and the position of the cloud is a little bit different. So by seeing these results, we were wondering, well, can we use this information to discriminate different brands of water just based on their microbial profile? Or in other words, can we make a kind of very specific fingerprint based on our flow cytometry data? To extract the useful information from these microbial clouds using flow cytometry, we used a technique which was called binning. And based on the binning, we could extract all necessary information to statistical analysis. So we could discriminate all different brand, brands of water based on their flow cytometry profile. But what can we now do in practice with these fingerprinting techniques? How can we use this knowledge now for practice? Well, we can try to define the degree of an acceptable change. By using these microbial fingerprints, we can see if a microbial community is changing or not a function of time. And if this change is between certain borders, we can allow this. So by knowing the system dynamics, we can define a certain baseline. We can also see how much from this baseline can be deviated. And like that, we can have an online warning system. Uh, that we will have, for example, a green light. This means that the microbial community is not changing at all and that everything is good. If the red uh, signal goes to orange, this means that the microbial community is changing quite a lot and that we have to have additional samples and more targeted analysis. Let me show you some examples of the added value of these online monitoring techniques. My first example is uh, an analysis from the Watertower Kattenberg near Ghent. In the y-axis you see the cell concentration, in the x-axis you see the days we have analyzed the samples. What you can see is that during the day we have some fluctuations of cell counts. What else you can see is that well, based on this baseline we also could detect some abnormalities, so some uh, deviations from this baseline. In this case we had too many cells present, in this case there were too few cells present in our drinking water. The second example is coming from a drinking water production unit in Kluizen. There we could simulate a contamination event and see if our technology could pick up uh, these events. On the y-axis you can see here the precursor dissimilarity. So this is something else than the total cell count. This value tells you how much uh, your sample or how much your community is going to deviate from the baseline. So in the beginning of the experiment we of course didn't have any contamination, so this is our uh, baseline number. Based on this we determined a certain threshold. And we could see that after we introduced the contamination that the parameter really quickly uh, went over this threshold so we could uh, analyze this deviation and detect it. 
After flushing out the contamination, we repeated the experiment again. So you could see that the microbial community was going back to its baseline. And then after introducing for a second time another contamination, we again could see that the threshold was uh, reached very quickly and that we could detect these deviations, showing the power of these techniques. So like that, we also could very quickly see uh, it, that there was a contamination present and that the operation operator could um, Kent University decided to create a spin-off company, Kitos, to bring this technology to the market. Kitos is taking samples, analyzing them on flow saturation tree, doing the fingerprinting, and giving advice for microbial management. And this in the domains of aquaculture, hydroponics, industrial and drinking water management. After the flow saturation tree analysis and the bioinformatics, the results are represented in a software platform Using this software, software platform, the customer can, together with Kitos, decide which microbial management uh, actions are needed to have an optimal uh, process. Let's now switch from microbial monitoring to microbial management. Last year, we could kick off a new project called Biostable, which was founded by our National Science Foundation. The goal of Biostable is to provide good, safe, tasty and reliable drinking water to all citizens in Flanders now, but also in the future. Because we know with climate change, condition, conditions will change, maybe the temperature in our drinking water network will increase, or the quality of our surface water will change. And like that, maybe we cannot guarantee anymore the good water quality we have now. Well, to examine these future effects, we are going to work with three different stakeholders. First of all, we have Aqua Flanders. This is the organization uh, where all the drinking water companies of Flanders are represented. Second of all, we have Capture, which is connecting academics together with industry and uh, facilitating this project. And finally, we have the professors of Kent University from the different domains, which uh, will make this project a success. Let's have a quick, quick look at the structure of the different work packages. So we have five different work packages within Biostable. Work package one is more about the isolation and identification of the organic fractions present in our drinking water. And we will see what is happening with these uh, fractions. Because these fractions are probably causing regrowth of bacteria, odor and smell problems. So first of all in work package two we are going to see what are the effects of chemical transformations of these organic fractions by for example chlorination or ozonation. In work package 3, we will see how the bacteria are going to uh, modify these organic fractions and if we have more growth of unwanted organisms and also if these organisms will create some smell and odor problems. And in work package 4, together with the drinking water companies, we will create some new microbial water quality indicators using flow cytometry but also using the no uh, most novel sequencing technologies. This all will be combined in work package 5, this knowledge, to make advanced models of drinking water distribution networks. And like that, we could predict uh, how to manage these microbial communities in networks. Worthwhile to mention is that Biostable will make a test infrastructure by the end of the year to simulate distribution networks. So if somebody from the audience is looking for a pilot to run some tests uh, simulating distribution networks, we have this available at our project. One of the major challenges is to make water biostable. And how can we achieve biostable water? Well, we'll have to look which type of bacteria are present, which type of nutrients are present, what is also the balance of these bacteria and these nutrients. The most obvious way to do this is to limit the amount of nutrients in our ecosystem and like that preventing regrowth of bacteria. How do you want to uh, achieve this at CMET? Well, here you see an ecosystem with uh, two types of bacteria, green ones and red ones. The red ones are the bad ones, the ones which we don't want to see in the ecosystem. And they are, they, these are growing on these carbon, phosphorus and nitrogen sources. So one way to eliminate these red bacteria and uh, so that they don't regrowth on these nutrients is to uh, capture these nutrients and immobilize them in order biomass. How can we do this? Well, we can provide some additional energy 
but without any carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus by providing more hydrogen and oxygen gas. On these two gases, we have bacteria, which we'll, uh, we call hydrogen oxidizing bacteria. We will grow on these uh, two compounds using this as an energy source. And like that, they, they can uh, very efficiently take up all the carbon, phosphorus, and nitrogen. Like that, uh, regrowth of bacteria in the drinking water will be limited, and uh, we have uh, a system which is more resistant towards pathogen invasion. In conclusion, three different points. First of all, I hope I could show you that we have nowadays uh, fast state-of-the-art microbial monitoring strategies available, and if you're interested in those ones, you can always use the KITOS platform. If you are interested in microbial chemical and modeling expertise, you can want to combine this with pilot testing, and I think uh, you can uh, find us uh, through the Biostable partners. And if you are looking for microbial management strategies for water, then our CMET microbial community engineers are at your service. With this, I thank you for looking to this presentation, and I'm looking forward for the discussion.